In question three, we have to complete each of these division statements that you see with the correct integer. So there is a blank in each statement which we have to fill with the correct integer. So let's solve them one by one. In part A, we have the statement 369 divided by blank is equal to 369. So what integer will make this statement correct? Well, this one is simple since the dividend and the quotient, the dividend and the quotient, they are exactly the same. The divisor must be equal to one. So in part A, the correct answer is simply equal to one. So let me highlight the correct answer. Then in part B, we have the statement minus 75 divided by blank is equal to minus one. To find out the divisor in this case, let's ignore the negative signs for a moment. The magnitude of the dividend is 75 and the magnitude of the quotient is 1. Now what integer can 75 be divided by? What number can 75 be divided by to get 1? Well, that integer, that number is 75. So we first put 75 here and now it's time to figure out whether this 75 will be negative or positive. So since the dividend minus 75 is uh, negative and the quotient is also negative, we see that the divisor must be positive. So in this case, the divisor will be equal to 75. So that's part B. Then in part C, we have minus 206 divided by what is equal to 1. Well, we know that any number divided by itself gives us 1. So in this case, we can directly say that the divisor will be equal to the dividend. The dividend is minus 206. So the divisor will also be equal to minus 206. So this is the answer for part C. Then in part D, we have minus 87 divided by blank is equal to 87. So let's first figure out the magnitude of the divisor and then we will figure out its sign. The magnitude of the dividend is minus 87 and the quotient is also 80, uh, the magnitude of the dividend is 87 and the quotient is also 87. So the divisor will also have a magnitude, will have a magnitude of one, simply equal to one. But what will be its sign? So since this is negative, dividend is negative, but quotient is positive, the divisor must also be negative. So in part D, the divisor is, the answer is minus one. Then in part E, we have blank divided by one is equal to minus 87. So again, ignore the negative sign for a moment and think about what integer when divided by one gives us 87. Well, that integer is 87 simply. So first we put 87 and then we see what sign this should have. So the uh, quotient is negative and the divisor is positive. So the dividend must be negative. So we must have this as minus 87. So in part E, the answer is minus 87. Then going to part F, we have blank divided by 48 is equal to minus one. So again, ignore the negative sign on minus one and think about what integer when divided by 48 gives us one. So that is that number is 48. So we first put, put 48 here and then we see that because the divisor is positive, but the quotient is negative, the dividend must be negative as well. So we have minus 40, we must have minus 48 here. So minus 48 is the answer for part F. Then in part G, we have 20 divided by blank is equal to minus two. So first think about what integer uh, should 20 be divided by to give us two? So 20 divided by 10 is two. So first we put 10 here and then we see that the dividend is positive and the, uh, uh, the quotient is negative. So the divisor must be negative. So we must have minus 10 here. So in part G, the answer is minus 10. And finally, in part H, we have the statement blank divided by four is equal to minus three. So ignoring the negative sign, first think about what integer divided by four gives us three. So that number is 12. So first we put 12 here and then we see that the divisor is positive, but the quotient is negative. So the dividend must be negative. So we must have minus 12 here. So in part H, the answer is 
minus 12. And with that, we have finished question number 3. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.